she said, well, you know, maybe her attorney thinks this is a good strategy. We wouldn't want to upset things for settling the case. Yeah, yeah, but you know, she did. She took it, she did it herself, and she's to blame for it. And I will tell you, I will never forgive Amy Goodman for that. And my boyfriend was like in tears. He was, he was weeping. I mean, he's a military, he was a military, he was a retired Navy guy. And you guys, you know, Navy guys don't, I mean, you, you know men, you know, he's like, a, some men don't cry. He cried. He, he broke down in tears. And you know, men is hard for some time. For some men, not all men, some men cry. I know that, but he did. He was really upset, and he was just like, she won't do this, and he was just like heartbroken. And he was heartbroken for me, and he was just like, and I was locked up in prison at the time, and I'm on the prison phone, what, what, the, what the fuck do you mean Amy Goodman won't do this? How could she do, how could she not think this is the right story? What did you say to her to make her not do this story? And he was like, I don't know, I don't know, I told her. I said, did you say this and this and this? And he said, yeah. So. Yeah, I heard you on the Jeff Friends program last week. Oh, week. on Libya. On Libya. <clears throat> so that's very similar to what's happening in Iraq. There is no reason for the United States to be invading Libya at all. There is no justification for this. Uh, we are, it's ironic because we're support, we're fighting Al Qaeda in Afghanistan and Iraq. And Libya is, a, is, a, is actually, the Libyan rebels are radical Islamists who are trying to institute Sharia. And whether you like Sharia or whether you like the Islam, whether you, whether you like Qaddafi or not, see this is where it gets you, you're an asset. Whether you like Qaddafi, you may hate him, you may think he's bad, but the facts are that, that the rebels are Islamic radicals. They do want to institute Sharia and at least be honest and say it. Because that's what you're going to get. And don't pretend you're somewhere else. Don't pretend these are people who, you, who are doing something different than what you say. That is what their goal is. And they don't want democracy. They're going to, Gaddafi is, has been in power for 41 years, and I know it's time for change, but he has also had a tremendous track record on women's rights. They do not have to wear the abaya. They are free <laughs> not to get married if they don't want to. They are free to get, women are free to get divorces if they want. And the kind, when we talk about Sharia, what I mean is that the Islamic, the, the, the Libyan rebels want the women to wear the burqa. An abaya is the burqa where they cover their hair and stuff. They don't have to do that now. They're going to have to do it in the future. They, are, they do not want the women to have the right to reject marriage proposals. Under Qaddafi's government, they have the, an imam actually visits the women before a marriage and sits them with them privately, which is really unheard of, and makes sure that the women are not being pressured into a marriage. And if the, if the woman says, the young woman says that she is being pressured, the imam is under the law of Libya, the imam has to protect the woman from the abuse of the relatives. And so he has to give her a chance to reject the marriage when nobody is there to pressure her to do it. Because, Islam, because this is what happens in Islamic families. Right now, there is a counter coup going on in Libya, <laughs> in Benghazi, and the, they have. There's all kinds of dramatic stuff that's happening. So Qaddafi's. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, that's true. So, but it's still, it's, it's, you know, so. Hasn't Qaddafi been a pretty good ally to the West in recent years? Absolutely. So why is you? Why is NATO supporting the rebels if they're in favor of Sharia? I don't understand why NATO supporting. It is, it is very interesting. Um, Qaddafi has, uh, oil, Libyan oil costs $1 per barrel to produce, and the United States had preferential contracts already. We, the United States and France and, it, and, and Britain all had, they could take as much oil as they wanted, and most of the oil does not come to the United States. It does, however, go to Italy and France and Britain. So it's a major source of European oil, and yet, the, what Qaddafi was doing was, Qaddafi also has gold. And I think it's very interesting that we have this fi major financial crisis, and now we're attacking a country that has both oil and a huge private reserve of gold on its own land, and like 500, I'm, I'm, I, I would have to double check this fact, but it's like 500 tons of gold in its bank vaults. 
143, I, will, I stand corrected, 143 tons of gold, correct? Something like that. And we will, we're trying to take their gold and their oil. And, and it's so dirty, it's a dirty fight, and it's just... Why would these radical fundamentalists want to let us have the oil and the gold once they win? Well, that, you know, you, you should be in Washington. That, that's the kind of thing that makes sense. But that, that's what they, you know, the, the Americans are choosing to believe that they're going to have this sweetheart deal. And I am agreeing with you. I think that as soon as they get in, they're going to say, you know, too bad. It's like, you know, you know, do you, and, and privately I get emails from some of these, I mean, because they know me, that they, they know that I'm out there. I'm against the rebels. And they do send me, I do get emails that are very nasty emails. And they said, do you really think we'll sell out and give you our, our gold for free? Do you really think we're going to do that? And I'm like, well, I think that Hillary Clinton thinks you're going to do it. And I think that, yeah. that you know, David Cameron and Britain thinks you're going to do it. And, and, and also, um, I do have documentation that Israel has promised. I ha actually have an Israeli military document, okay, in Hebrew that I've had translated. And it says that the Israelis are, and, and okay, this is just what it says, that it, it's, this is a primary document, and I have, you know, it says that Israel will provide financial support to the rebels in exchange for a military base in Libya, in the Green Mountains. And that they, they call it, the military base will be called one by one. And the, and the Green Mountains is where, close to where the gold is, which I find very interesting. So. Uh, I just have a brief point about. Okay. Uh, There's one the, woman who's had her hand oh, oh, all oh, night. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. Please. And I'm a woman. Uh, okay, that's good. Susan, I really. Sorry, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I, I'm very interested in your constitution, how you're dealing with all of this. I've been really impressed with all the interviews I've heard, and how you seem to be like a really grounded, confident, yet buoyant person. And um, I don't know, just hearing what you have, like a sense of humor and the sense of irony, I like to think I have that. But how, how, do, how do people deal, go through what you've gone through, like all, you know, are the people we know being called into grand jury, being put into what's the detention called with um, the, the communication center detention. That yes. is a very scary thing. And Bradley Manning, like when it gets that bad, like how how can we be sure that people can still stand up and talk like you are today? <laughs> well, I I'll tell you, when I was locked up in Carswell, I cried every day. And when I well, not when I first went in, I was there supposedly, when I first went in, I was told it was going to be four months and then I'd be released. And the first four months, I was okay. Because I was like, you know, I'm going to get out of this, you know, and I'm going to tell, you know, and, and boy, am I going to have a story to tell and they're not going to shut me up. But at, when they refused to release me and I realized that I was not going home and they said, and at that point, they dropped the bomb on me that they were trying to hold me indefinitely. And only, only when I thought I was going to be held indefinitely, and then that continued for another eight months, uh, I became absolutely terrified out of my mind. And I began to have very serious post-traumatic stress. Well, you were saying you hadn't gone through depression before, and I was just wondering how... I, I went through deep anxiety, and I was just... I, I, it, it was like my, my blood pressure was... Uh, the stress level was like it was like a war. A constant war. I was so frightened. I, uh, I, I actually <clears throat> colored my hair. Okay, my hair actually went white, and it.